Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today is going to be a pretty somber day. The end of an era, the conclusion to a chapter, the last two raw. Well, maybe that's a tad bit dramatic, but we do have a piece of farm equipment leaving that has been on our farm for almost 10 years at this point. Before we get too far along, make sure you smash that like button. It is one of the easiest ways that you can support the channel. And besides, it's free. As I mentioned in the previous video, our new 7 Series John Deere's production had been delayed over a month and we weren't sure when it was going to come in. Well, there's no waiting left. We got a call from our John Deere dealership and it's been completed. It's sitting up at Moline. They just need to go get it, which they're going to do here in the next couple days, which means we're finally comfortable letting our trade-in combine go. We weren't going to do it unless we knew for sure that the new one was going to be here and it in fact is going to be on its way, should be here by the end of the week. Much like this 9670 STS that we're trading in, a lot of equipment on our farm is a 2012 model, or at one time we had a 2012 model piece of equipment in the place of something newer. And there's a pretty simple reason for that. For those of you who are familiar with farming and maybe the last decade or two of how everything's gone, in 2012, there was a rather significant drought here and across the entire Corn Belt, resulting in extremely low supplies of grain, which means very high prices. Corn almost got to $9 per bushel. And as an operation who typically likes to use the store and ignore principle, weld the door shut after we fill the bins, empty them in the summer, let's just say that we had a lot of money to spend that year. This resulted in a lot of new and fancy green and yellow paint. We haven't really upgraded a lot of it since then because we haven't needed to. That was a 2012. We had a 9770 STS, that was a 2012. That is a 2012 or maybe a 13. That's a 2012 and that is a 2013. So all of this at one point in time was courtesy of the drought of 2012. That is definitely a topic for a completely separate video. It seems like sometimes in the worst of circumstances, farmers can do pretty well when it's all said and done. Now in the case of 2012, we weren't making millions off of insurance. We just had a very large supply of old crop corn and soybeans. It worked out well for us. I think that is a pretty common theme across a lot of farms in the Midwest. Now, 2021 is somewhat similar, although not as extreme, very tight balance sheet, low supplies, high exports, we're using a lot of grain, so the prices have worked their way up. Of course, you add on a few weather scares in South America and the Western Corn Belt, and here we are, we had up to $7 corn at one point in time this summer. So I think you're going to see a lot of operations, again, getting some new equipment. It's a pretty straightforward accounting mindset. A lot of farmers have a very good year, and this happens in other businesses as well. Would they rather pay more income taxes to Uncle Sam, or would they buy a new tractor? Now, you don't build any equity with equipment like this. It is just a depreciating asset, really not a huge return on investment. But most people would rather get a new tractor than give the government any more money to use for whatever they're going to use it for. There is a saying though that good times make bad farmers and bad times make good farmers. So you can definitely make financial blunders when things are going really well that you cannot afford to pay for when prices and yields head back downward. That's why you have to be very cautious with your investments and not spend more than you can afford to lose. We're just measly grain farmers though. We're not in the business of making money. Of course, we gotta have our fire extinguisher back in the combine. It is standard equipment. The nice thing about these water fire extinguishers is they're the only ones that you can actually get the satisfaction of using without feeling guilty. Combine's on fire, put it out. Although once your combine catches on fire, I'm just gonna tell you now, you're probably better off letting it burn. Make an attempt to put it out, but no reason to hurt yourself or get caught with a piece of equipment with a lifetime of gremlins. Electrical problems, you name it. Fire problems are hard to resolve. That is also a 2012. It'll be leaving the farm here in the next few weeks. Well, here it is, 9670. It's only been a one owner combine. We actually watched it roll off the line in Moline almost 10 years ago. So we do have a little bit of a sentimental attachment to this machine. We've had pretty good luck with this machine, other than the one time that the clean grain elevator paddles completely snapped and it was stuck in the middle of a cornfield for five hours while Sloan's worked on it, or the time we completely ruined a tire by clipping a bridge. Although that wasn't the combine's fault, that was Katie's fault. Sorry, Katie, throw you under the bus there. This was one of the last 70 series combines to come off of the assembly line before they switched over to the S series. By the time this combine was produced, they'd worked a lot of the kinks out of this specific model, and it's been extremely reliable. 
Other than a lack of ergonomics, it's a pretty good combine. So we'll take a little bit of a moment of silence for our combine. You hate to see it go, but you love to watch it leave. Time for its last dance. I guess I should mention the corn head is attached because we're also trading it in. We've already got one new corn head, so we'll be trading this in for a new C8R corn head. So we'll have two new corn heads as well. Now the corn head, I can't say has been as spectacular as the combine itself. They just have a dirty job. Reliability is not always the best. Let's just say that sometimes the maintenance involves a cutting torch and also possibly a welder. Never a good sign. Let's throw it in road gear for the last time. There, we're good to go. Blasters. Beacon. Let's do it. It's the last time leaving the farm. We'll miss it. It helps to keep a couple hundred dollars earmarked in the budget for mailbox replacement when you take an eight row corn head down the road. Just narrow enough to take down the road, but wide enough to be a real pain in the rear end doing so. Now here is an example of irritation. The mowing company parks directly across from the mailbox so I can't get around. I'll be back. I find that people are much more agreeable when you're nice to them. my videos. Looks like they got a new 780 tucked away in there. I came down this road early just for their sake. If I would have given it another couple hours, it would have been an oily mess. And we've arrived. Alliance Tractor, John Deere dealership. That's all she wrote. 1,771 hours on the machine, about 1,200 on the separator. It looks like our last field of corn was a terrible one. 165 bushel on average. So that's a good one to let go of this combine on. Now I believe this machine's already actually been sold to another local farmer. There's a tremendous demand and there always has been for one owner machines that are well taken care of. A lot of people like them in that 1500 to 2000 hour range. Not just combines but tractors too. I'm willing to bet that the person who got this combine is going to be more than thrilled with it. It's a good machine. We were just ready to trade up something with less hours, maybe a little more technology. And remember what this area looks like and all the ergonomics. When we get that new 7 Series Combine, this thing is going to look like a dinosaur. A little bit of an aside, technology does not really mean an increase in throughput. The new Combine will be a little bit more efficient just because it's more powerful. Really these 9670s and all the 70 Series Combines are about the same as the newer 6 and 7 Series S Series Combines. They just have less tech on the inside and they aren't quite as geared for operator comfort. The new ones though, comfort, convenience, operator luxuries, you name it. Hefty price tag to go along with it though. There's that darn 8RX quad track just eyeing me down every time I pull in the lot here. Maybe if I sat in it for like 
five seconds, it would just satisfy me enough that I'd never need to do it again. I doubt it. A lot of equipment parked out here. A bunch of corn heads, platforms, drapers. Harvesting's right around the corner. Looks like the shop is full of combines and other harvesting accessories. We're about six weeks out. Get the battery off one last time. Well, goodbye, old friend. I'm gonna miss you. Good luck to whoever takes you over. Well, it didn't take long. I've already found something else I want. That's a pretty combine. That brand new fresh from Factory Shine on deer. Hard to beat that. Is that a 780? It'd be quite the upgrade from the 9670. A John Deere dealership lot is just not a good place to be financially. It's only going to cost you money if you come here. In case you wanted to know what a $450,000 planter looks like, brand new exact emerge with liquid starter system and tracks. They nailed the look though. Is it worth the price? Man, there's a lot going on on the back of that. Just imagine what a mouse could do back there. Someone made this switch over from the dark side. Can't get too close, I may have to take a Benadryl. 690, that's nice. Ooh. Look at the stance on that tractor. 620 quad track. I think that's wider than normal. I'm just gonna stay away from that one. It's too expensive to even get close to. At least we have some good developments here at the farm to balance out the sadness of watching our old and beloved combine leave. That good news is that all of our areas out in these soybean fields that were low lying and saturated for a long time are actually starting to perk back up. Those few four plus inch rainfall events that we've had over the last month to six weeks really took its toll. Our top end yield has come down a little bit, but it is nice to see our soybeans greening up. So they are starting to put some more growth on, hopefully add more pods and fill out very efficiently. Almost all of the yellowing that's been present for the last two or three weeks is gone essentially, or at least I can't see it anymore. Maybe I've just adapted and just do not see those painful images. They appear to be in good shape. These soybeans actually look phenomenal. Now, as I said, I don't think we're at the top end of our yield potential because of all the water damage. We have a good amount of pods growing on here. We just need them to fill out and finish strong. These soybeans are pretty tall. The camera's right around my belly button, a little bit above it. They're at least three foot in the air. I always feel the need to include the disclaimer that looks of a soybean crop are one of the most misleading things out there. You really can't tell that much about your final yield by just looking out in the field just because it's green or just because they're tall really does not have that much bearing on the final yield. It's almost a tale as old as time when it comes to soybeans. We've seen horrible, ugly looking soybeans yield the best and we've seen great looking soybeans that we thought had the highest potential in the world do poorly. It really comes down to that last stretch of the growing season. August is key. That's where we are right now. If we keep getting spoon fed these half inch to an inch rains, we're gonna have a pretty good crop. That's still a possibility even after all the damage we've taken. Speaking of a big crop, we're still needing to fix this 48 foot grain bin. I showed you guys last winter how it's starting to bow out. The door has a pretty noticeable bulge here out the middle. We're afraid that if we don't get it fixed, at some point, it could be this year, could be next year, it could be 10 years from now, that's gonna pop open and we're gonna have 10,000 bushels of corn on the ground. This 48 foot grain bin, nine rings tall, can hold 45,000 bushels of corn. That's a lot of weight. The worst part is that the company who made this bin and this door, Superior Bin Co. right there, is no longer in business. These bins were actually manufactured just 10 miles away from me right here in Mattoon, which is my hometown. Do what you please with that information. I think the fact that they're out of business may have something to do with it and might represent why we have problems with this door. To be completely fair though, this bin is older than I am. And I don't think they were designed 30 plus years ago to hold 62 pound test weight corn. Back then, if you got 56 pound test weight corn, you're doing great. This year, we're gonna have some very heavy corn with all the fungicide we applied. We've talked to a few different bin experts. Obviously, one of the first things we could do is replace the door as a whole. Something we've had suggested is because these doors are no longer made and new doors don't fit this same type of bin structure, we could just put angle iron around it and secure it down that way it doesn't pop up. That would be the cheapest and the easiest fix. We are definitely leaning towards the angle iron patch job as of right now. One, it's cheaper. Two, it's easier. And cheaper and easier, that's kind of the motto of our farm. We've got four more of these superior bins. Hopefully they fare a little bit better than this big 48 foot one has. 
there's really not much you can do about it. Time just takes its toll on all of us. Unfortunately, when you get all your crop work done, you get to work on all the small, fun projects you've been putting off. Dad and I have been spraying a lot of fence rows with our gator to clean up our corn and our beans just to make them look pretty. Chris has been mowing roadsides. We're in the process right now of replacing this boot right here. A hole had been worn in it and it was throwing grease around and we were driving fast down the road. The grease was getting on the exhaust pipe in there and making it smoke. Needless to say that the first time it happened, we were very concerned and we did some further research. Everything looked fine. Has to be fixed though, because we can only go about 30 miles an hour without it smoking. It's kind of comical the diversity in the jobs we do over the summer. I can't think of one summer over the last 10 years I've worked here that we haven't done something completely different than we did the summer before. We're always working on some kind of summer project. Today's a beautiful day to be working outside, especially in the shade. It's 85 degrees, the crops are growing, and really nothing else to do. In other news, we got our first round of fertilizer prices for next growing season, and wow, that's gonna hurt the pocketbook. Prices are double, if not more than double, for next growing season. And grain prices aren't quite double. So there is certainly a downside to prices getting higher. Everything else seems to follow suit on the way up and doesn't like to come down as fast as the grain prices do. It only takes a couple days in the grain market for us to be back down at four or even three dollar corn. But these fertilizer prices are here to stay for, I would imagine, one to two years. Unless, of course, prices stay high, well then they're just gonna stay here as well and possibly go higher. Everyone gets their hand in the cookie jar. And obviously there are some global supply and demand factors at play. We've just got a lot going on in the world right now, causing a lot of headaches for everyone and costing some people a lot of money, farmers included, but manufacturers are suffering as well. Wow, looks like we might get another rain shower today. I'd take another inch of rain. At this point, every inch we get could be considered the million dollar rain. We've got a lot of subsoil moisture out here. It's not gonna take much to finish this out. All right, everyone, this one's going to be short and sweet today. There's really not a whole lot going on other than just sit and watch the crop grow, which can be kind of boring to watch on YouTube, I'm sure. Things will definitely start to pick up around here at the farm as the crop gets closer and closer to the finish line. Thank you all for tuning in. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more. And comment down below if you have any questions. You know I love to talk about farming. Have a great day, everyone. Peace!